Welcome everybody to this webinar, which is being held by the Association for Language Learning London branch. Um, and it's about preparing for summer uh, 2023 with um, Edexcel, Pearson Modern Excel, Modern Languages. It's Tuesday, the 24th of January, 2023, 7.30. Um, on Saturday, we had a lovely event um, in London where we invited people to talk about what was going to be happening for the new GCSE. So starting teaching in 2024, first testing in 2026. And at that event, you can see that Eva was there to talk on behalf of Edexcel, and we had a little panel discussion where all three exam boards talked about their plans. But we didn't have time or space to be able to have all of the exam boards talking about this current year, what you had to do for this 2023. And that's where we invited Pearson Edexcel, said, if you'd like to do a webinar, you're very welcome to. They wanted to. And there was lots of people who wanted to come along as well. So that's what this webinar is for. But allow me, please, to just talk about the Association for Language Learning. We're really, really happy to be holding this and to hold things for um, corporate members. We really feel that it's very important that we have this link, very close link, with people who produce materials, people who produce exams. Um, you will anyone who came along on um, Saturday will see just how how useful that is that we've worked together, that we're very interested in talking together about what's going on, so that we can help teachers, but also ultimately the learners. So if you're a member of AWL now, now is the time to write in the chat that you're a member and to encourage other people to join, please. Um, and for anybody who's not a member, if you want to join, I put a scan, a code there. Um, you have, can have a code there, AWL Jan 10, which will give you a 10% discount. So please, if you're a member of AWL, please make yourself known now and encourage people to join. Also be aware that um, we've got other events coming up. So for example, we've got some webinars coming up. Joe Dale got in touch and said, oh, let's have some more webinars. So we've got some there. Um, we've got the details there about dyslexia for dyslexic learners, also about grammar. Um, and also there's of course our yearly language world, a wonderful event which is taking place in Sheffield, great speakers and we've got this our lovely lovely president liz black it's going to be the first time when she's president there so it would be lovely if as many of people as possible can come along to that in sheffield the 17th and 18th of march so uh, now it remains for me to nothing else remains for me but to hand over to um sharon who's going to talk about preparing for summer 2023 Really, really happy that you can do this, Sharon. We go uh, back a very long time, don't we? we? Do. <laughs> I don't know how many iterations of the GCSE that we've done. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but really, I'm very much looking forward to this. Thank you very much for offering to do this on behalf of our, our members. Thank you. I'll pass over to you. I'll stop sharing my screen and it's over to you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Helen. Um, delighted to be joining you tonight for for the next hour, and I hope to be sharing some very useful information with you about 2023 and the support that we offer you and to make sure you're fully informed about our assessments for then. Um, and we will, if we have time, just touch on the events that we have organised for uh, bringing your attention to the, the new qualification for 2024. But tonight is mainly about 2023. Um, I'm going to, I'll probably pause at certain stages just to see if there's any big questions that are coming up about what I'm saying. Um, but otherwise, just put your questions in the chat. And Rebecca Waker, who is our lovely new subject advisor, who you can see there, um, she can introduce herself a little bit later on. We'll try to answer your questions as we go along. So I'm going to share my screen now. Share. I'm going to share from the beginning and I'm going to take myself down. There we go. Okay, so um, for those of you who have not met before, I'm Senior Development Manager at Pearson Ed Excel. So I've been involved in developing the current qual and the new one. So let's have a look at preparing for summer 2023, which is going to be very much on your mind. And there are a few new things that perhaps you don't know or things that you would like to just um, hear again. So we are, I'm just going to, um, I'd say that this presentation is partly uh, with slides on with um, links 
to point you in the direction of things that you might want to look at, but that we won't go into in detail. And then there will be other slides which has information on that I'm going to talk in more detail about because it's very relevant to the assessment for 2023. So I'm just going to show you how you can um, have a look at what our examiner said about students' performance in 2022. And I'm going to talk to you about our support for you for uh, conducting the speaking for GCC and um, and GCE speaking. And by the way, this session is for all languages, all of our 14 languages, although I may refer a little bit more to French, German and Spanish because they are the, the, the biggest languages that we offer. But it, the, this is... Um, pertinent to all languages. I want to talk to you about the GCC paper for writing optionality amendment. Very importantly, the DFE Ocqual non-core vocabulary change. I want to talk to you about our uh, accessibility amendments, which were Pearson specific and which are separate and different from the amends that we made for COVID and for 2022. Um, for example, the optionality amends, these, these were different and additional. And, you know, we'd really like to tell you about those. I'll tell you about <clears throat> what the post exam series support is going to be, do a very quick introduction to GCSE 2024, and how you can find out more, because that is a session that could last a whole day and we've only got 60 minutes. So I'll just introduce you to that and tell you how to find out more. I want to point you to these wonderful diversity, equity and inclusion resources for languages that we um, have uh, quite a few of now and we are continuing to develop them. They are uh, resources which you can use in your classroom. They do have exercises in the language, mainly French German, French, German and Spanish at the moment, and they give an excellent um, cultural background to the language in all sorts of contexts you might not have thought about before. And then I'd like to introduce you properly to our new subject advisor, Rebecca Waker. So that's our agenda. Let's kick off um, and see how we get on and, do, and put your questions in the chat. So this is one of those slides where I just want you to, to bring your attention to the fact that we do have um, examiner feedback on summer 2022. I'm not going to go into detail on this tonight because we have delivered training on this in October. But if you click on this link, because you will get the slides eventually, and then you could just click on the link and see what's there. There's some very good feedback, very useful feedback from our examiners on summer 2022, in particular um, for speaking and writing, the productive tasks where students um, you know, need the most kind of advice on how to get the most out of those exams. And we also have some exemplar material with commentaries um, for paper four in French, German, Spanish. I'm going to get rid of these floating. Um, how do I do that? Hide. Floating meeting controls. There we are. That's it. Now we can see. So if you click on those links, you'll get through to um, exemplar material on French, German and Spanish, where you will have uh, student work which has been commented on and marked by examiners so that you can see how and why students got the mark that they got. Because I know that the mark schemes can sometimes be um, not always as easy as we'd like them to be to, to interpret. So they are there to help you to do that. Um, preparing for GCSE and GCE speaking. Now, this we know is important because it's the one of the four, the paper that you have to conduct as teachers and that it can be quite stressful. I know this because I've done it myself and I can remember uh, setting it up, preparing it, putting the recorder in the right place, sitting um, as the teacher, sitting as a student, practicing the recording, practicing the timing, shuffling papers about. Um, we know that it's quite a stressful thing to do. So we've got quite a lot of support for that. Um, the first thing I want to tell you about is the free 
GCSE and A-level conducting the speaking exam training. We have a specific training event for French, German and Spanish, which is language specific at these dates, 7th and 22nd of February, with Spanish to be confirmed because we had to rearrange it because of teacher industrial action. Um, so we will, that will be on our website as soon as we can rearrange it. On the 2nd of March, we have a session for all languages um, because the how to conduct the speaking and the administration of it all is the same for everyone. So it's important um, that you come to that. Um, for A-level, we have a general session for all languages. Again, it has to be rearranged because of teacher industrial action. So look out on the website for when that is going to be. But for French, German and Spanish, there are actually recorded sessions um, on conducting the speaking, which do include language specific examples. So do sign up for those. I am going to click on a few links tonight, so I might as well start now. So, for example, if I click on that one, um, you'll see that uh, it tells you exactly what is in that those sessions. Um, it goes right through the speaking exam from, you know, when you first, the student first comes into the room to how you um, get the most out of your students in the exam and how you, you know, do all the administration of it as well. Um, but also we've got these very good um, uh, additional support, which um, is useful for, for all languages. We've got these things called Spotlight On, which is a one-stop document which provides advice and useful links to the speaking support. So for example, if I click on the GCSE, there is one document here, which takes you to everything you could possibly wish to know about how to conduct the speaking exam. So there, I have to say that this video, the 12 minute video on how to conduct the speaking exam has been extremely popular. We actually show you from before the student comes in, how to set yourself up, what happens when the student comes in, how you sit them down so that they can do their preparation time. And then it runs you through going from um, the role pay through the picture based task to the conversation and teachers have told us that they found that really, really helpful. Um, we've got FAQs there, um, exam examples, conversation ideas, um, admin support. The admin support guide is really important. Could you just hold on one moment? I'm just going to tell someone to be a little bit quiet outside. Just hold on. Sorry about that. Someone was speaking rather loudly. Um, yes, so uh, there, then we have um, the crib sheet, uh, which is great because it, it actually um, gives you little uh, phrases to use um, in the language to move you on from one part of the oral to the next. And then there are examiner reports for all the languages, the specification essentials, past papers, because sometimes, you know, when you're looking on the website, we understand that you, you know, you, you don't want to be looking, there's one piece of information here and another piece of information there. So this is a really useful document, Spotlight is what we call it, where you just click on that and you find everything that you need all in one place. And we have one for A-level as well, which is the same. Um, Video walkthroughs, I mean, I will just click on this. I'm not going to show you the, the whole video, but just, just to sort of show you what it looks like. I'm going to pause that. Um, it takes you right through um, the whole of the preparation. Um, so for example, what's needed. Uh, so you, it's kind of like a tick list there. And then you have the, the, 
the student coming into the room, um, the, the rules that you have to follow, but the best, but oh dear, that's a terrible picture of me. Let's move on from that. Where you, um, I'm playing the part of the invigilator in this particular video. And it takes you right through when the student sits down to taking them into um, the teacher. And then it runs through how you move from one part of the oral to the next. And it's a, a very popular video. And there's one for A-level as well. Just a caveat on that video, as you will know, if you did undertook the oral last year, we don't send orals off now on CD or USB sticks. You upload them directly to Edexcel using Learner Work Transfer. So those videos are being updated to include that information. So there's a, they're a little bit out of date on that point, but on all the other points, they are fully up to date. And I would say, you know, give them a look might be quite helpful and especially if, if you've got new teachers in the department it's really good to show them that because reading how you do it is one thing but seeing how you do it is another speaking exam window for GCSC and GC this year is 17th of April to the 19th of May the guide for not just for the speaking but but for all of the exam papers that tells you exactly what to do uh, from beginning to end is the administrative Administrative Support Guide, um, affectionately known by us as the ASG, and it gives you additional details relating to access to the exam materials, how to do the learner work transfer submission, um, how to retain students' notes following oral exams. There's the crib sheet there that I told you about that helps you, that gives you language in the target language for moving from one part of the oral to the next. Uh, why not? show you what the admin support uh, looks like. Uh, here it is and where you will you will find this. Um, this is for all languages, by the way, and you will find this in the exam section of the website under um, forms. So it goes through all of the skills and it tells you everything you need to know about all of the papers. And the speaking one is particularly detailed because it's you that has to carry that out. So the admin support guide is very, very important. There's one for GCSE and one for A-level as well. Right, here's one, um, the writing optionality amendment is something you might not know about. So in summer 2022, you will notice that in paper four, the writing paper, you had a few things that were different, which Ofqual um, allowed us to do, and in fact, asked us to do, to take account of the fact that students had missed so much teaching and learning because of COVID. So we call it a COVID amendment. And we submitted an amendment request to Ofqual to be able to keep those extra features that we were able to use in summer 2022, which is great. So that means that in the paper four for foundation, there will still be an extra option for question two. So in the original iteration of our GCSE, there was only one question at question two. There are now two. So there are two questions for question two and three at foundation, and of course for questions one and two at higher. Um, there's only one option for the uh, for the picture task and for the dictations because we felt that the more that would just make it more confusing if you had two picture tasks to go through, and would students really be able to choose which dictation to do? The point of the extra options uh, foundation is because what, what originally because um, students had missed out on teaching and learning. Um, and therefore might not have covered the whole spec. But nevertheless, choice is always good. And in all of our research, the students tell us what, what they want is choice. Because if they can't write or speak or, you know, about one particular topic, then it's likely that they will be able to about the other one. So in your 2023 pa writing papers, you will have an extra option uh, for question two. We've kept the uh, uh, 
change that all question titles will appear in English for both foundation and higher tier papers. Originally, they were all in the target language. The reason for that is so that students can get um, have a look more quickly through the papers to to see which question they're more likely to want to write about because the questions in uh, the the title is in English. And we've also managed to keep the additional five minutes extra assessment time at foundation. So we're very pleased to be able to offer you that. Um, accessibility is, is really our thing at Pearson uh, now, uh, even more than it was before. Now, this applies to all of our 14 GCSE modern languages and all specifications and sample assessment materials have been updated to show the change. So if you go on to the website to your, um, lang to your language, you will see that the SAMs now all have that extra option um, at foundation. And you will see that all the titles of the questions are in English. So that's for everyone to have a look at and hopefully that will make the experience a bit better for, for your students. This is another really important change, the non-core vocabulary change. Um, so, you know how um, originally all uh, the listening and reading papers had to have a number of words which were not in the vocabulary list. And the idea was to assess a certain skill which was much more demanding, where students would have to read around unfamiliar or unknown words to be able to find the answers. Um, and that was amended for uh, 2022 um, because, again, a, a, as a way of saying, we know that you've had a hard time, that you haven't perhaps covered all the spec, so we're going to take that away and any words that are in the papers that aren't on the vocab list, we're going to gloss them. Well, Ofqual has decided to remove the requirement for GCSE assessments to use vocabulary not on the vocabulary lists permanently. So from 2023 onwards, um, that rule now applies. So no, all words on the listening and reading, most, the vast majority of them will come from the vocabulary list. Now, there is a caveat to that um, because the 2016 um, qualifications, GCSE vocabulary lists, were, ne were not required to be comprehensive because they presumed prior knowledge from key stage three study. And there was this requirement that we had to use words outside of the list. But don't worry about that. I'll show you how you, what that actually means, and it's nothing to be alarmed about. So for those of you who know anything about the new qualification that's coming, one thing that you will probably know is that from uh, 2024, there is a um, comprehensive vocabulary list consisting of 1,500 words at foundation and 1,700 at higher. And no words from outside of that list can be included on any exam paper, with the, ex with the exception of a very small number of words in the reading paper that can be glossed. Um, so what that means is that even words like le, la, le, de, di, das, di, have to be individually listed on that vocabulary list. So inflected forms, um, highly regular inflected forms of verbs, so verbs like avoir and être, which are very different from the stem, they're highly irregular verbs, the whole verb is actually included in the vocabulary list. I could talk about the vocabulary list for 2024 all day, I'm not going to. But just to let you know, that's what's happening in 2024. But for our vocabulary list, although um, Ofqual has removed the requirement uh, for GCSE assessments to use vocabulary that's not on the vocabulary list. There, was, there are still some caveats to that because the, G, the 2016 vocabulary list was not designed in that way. So what it means is um, that our papers will 
only use words from the vocabulary list plus the following categories, and you won't be alarmed when you see them. Derived forms from the grammar list according to the tier. So that's conjugate, for example, conjugations of verbs in all the required tenses, all the different articles. So when I, if you look at the vocabulary list that we have now, verbs like avoir and être aren't included actually in the vocabulary list in their own right. Um, but of course, we assume that all students are going to know them. And there are other uh, verbs like that. We also assume that students are going to know all the different articles. Le lalé, de di, das di. I'm afraid I'm not a Hispanist. I can't, I'm not sure what they are actually for, is it lo, uh, lo and la? Anyway, um, they are not listed specifically in the vocabulary list, but it would be ridiculous to say that we're not going to include them because they're not on the list. So derived forms from the grammar list will, will continue to be included in assessments. This next category is cognates, only which are genuine cognates in the target language. So words which look the, look the same um, and which are absolutely, you know, very obvious to students what they mean, but not false friends. So for example, the examples that we've got here is impression, is it invasion? Energie in German, but not false friends like Monet, Constipado, Eventuel. So just because they look like, um, you know, English words, we would never include those, assuming that students would know them. The, in fact, those are the kind of words that if we included them, we would gloss. The next category of words which might be included are those which are assumed prior knowledge from key stage three, for example, colours, numbers and other commonly used items. Because in the vocabularies for 2024, every single colour that can be included in, a, in, a, in an exam has to be in the list already. But we assume that students will know numbers and colours um, from uh, from their key stage three. If it was a really obscure colour that we didn't think students would know, then we would gloss it. And we will, our, our whole intention is to make the exam accessible and fair. So any words that we think are remotely obscure um, will be glossed. The other group of words which um, would be included uh, are easy recognizable place names and proper names like Paris, Madrid, Berlin, um, even if they're not in the vocabulary list, and um, uh, and you know people's names, so they will be included. But otherwise, there may be a very small number of words not listed in the vocabulary lists, and which are outside of the categories mentioned above, but whose inclusion, sorry is integral to the question. And any of those sort of words will be glossed and they will not be targeted in the questions. So any words that aren't in the vocab list, that aren't in those categories, and which we think the students won't know, will be given to the students. And they will be added at the bottom of the paper. It would be made very clear where they are in the, in the text and they will be glossed and they won't be targeted. So we won't ask any questions that assumes knowledge of those words. I don't know whether in the chat, anything's come up where people are confused in any way about what I've said. No questions, no. Good, so that's hopefully clear. Um, if, you, if you are thinking of it and thinking, I don't really get that, then please do ask a question. OK, now, we talked about the optionality amendments that Ofqual made because of COVID, where we added an extra option to the writing paper and so on. These often were confused with the very separate accessibility amendments that Pearson made. And we made these amendments before COVID. And the whole point of them was to make our qualifications more accessible. And the reason why I'm talking about them now in relation to 2023 is because they will be there in 2023 again. Now, what 
these accessibility amendments, by the way, there, there you've got your first little, um, what do we call that square? Um, it's gone completely out of my head. QR, QR code, right. So if you click on that QR code, you will get to the same guide as is underlined here. So these accessibility amendments were made because we listened to feedback from teachers after the 2019 exam and we heard loud and clear and it wasn't just as it was also off quality dfe heard loud and clear that the gcse exams were actually quite demanding so we decided to do what we could to our exams to bring them more in level with what we thought the gcse should be so we did an awful lot of um research we went through all of our papers and we asked ourselves why is that demanding uh and when teachers were telling us the inference is too hard uh there's too many words that aren't on the vocab list they're very they, you know they're too long um the, the cultural aspect is beyond the the uh the experience of the learners we listened to all of that looked at all of our papers we went out and trialed them with hundreds of students and made lots and lots of small changes which have actually resulted in making quite a big change overall so summer 2022 i'm going to tell you a little a little bit about them about what those were in a minute but summer 22 2022 was the first full series with those amendments and the whole purpose of them was to reduce cognitive load, reduce the level of demand, to improve clarity and most of all to improve the experience of students taking the exam. Because um, if, a, if an exam is hard you can mitigate that to a certain extent with the grade boundaries as you know so students could still come out with a reasonable grade but they could have had a horrible experience in the exam because they found it so difficult and they feel like they, they, they can't do languages they don't want to carry on with languages they get upset in the exam and that's what we wanted to to stop or we certainly wanted to try to stop that as much as we could um, for our students so um, we have happily had very positive feedback from teachers and students on these. I'm going to just tell you most uh, what sort of very, very briefly what those changes were. So for listening and reading, we made the extract shorter. So that the what they were hearing and reading wasn't so dense. We had fewer and less demanding inference questions. So we changed the profile of how many inference questions we included. We made the content more relatable and more within the experience of GCSE students. And that was across the board in listening, reading um, and in writing. So um, I'll give you an example in a moment, but literary text and, and authentic material, which was a required, which is a requirement for the current qualification. Um, been more rigorously adapted to make them more accessible. Um, because I just didn't say here that we made the, yes, it is more accessible use of target language. And we looked at what makes the target language de more demanding. So we looked at the use of pronouns, the use of the passive, the use of how many tenses are we, have we gotten in one sentence? Um, how long are the sentences? How difficult are the connectors? And we kind of analyzed what made a text difficult and made, made sort of rules about how, you know how long sentence should be how much complex language you should have within a sentence and so on so that um together with um uh the, the more rigorous adaptation of the authentic material has really had quite a significant result so one example of the kind of cultural stuff that we perhaps had been doing um there was in the sams a um uh, a reading text about Mother's Day and its origins and it went right back to you know the 19th century and and where Mother's Day came from and it was quite 
had, had a high sort of cognitive demand and it was quite historical in its nature and we changed that text to a more everyday cultural text about how Mother's Day is celebrated in France and how the children you know make presents for their mothers and and sort of more everyday kind of things and that is now our focus to still include cultural aspects to still be authentic but to make it accessible to um, the level of more accessible to the level of a GCSE um, really significant for the listening papers apart from making the extracts shorter um, it was also we played around with sorry shortening the, the text length gave us more time we also removed the examples as to, to how to fill in the, que uh, the questions because students told us in our trialing that they didn't really help that much and sometimes they were confusing and sometimes they didn't necessarily match the level of the question so we thought they're, they're not useful because they took up quite a lot of time and as the requirement is set by Ofqual the length of the listening um, exam is set so we couldn't just give longer time so we played around with the length of the text with the examples created extra time and then put that extra pause time in between the questions and particularly we didn't put it as a standard time in between each question but the more difficult questions perhaps um, had more pause time and certainly for questions where students had to write their answers out as opposed to ticking a box um, and certainly in the trialing it it worked and um, I'll show you in a moment what the reaction has been to that and the last thing that we did was to um, uh, students are, um, are now prompted can now be prompted by the teacher to ask a question because sometimes they forgot and the teacher has to follow the exactly what's written for them and we didn't think that was as fair as it should be so now teachers can um, prompt students to ask a question so with all of those and there were lots of other you know little things like that that we did that has um, actually resulted in quite a big difference and just have a little look at what the teachers said and this is exactly what we wanted to achieve so we're very happy with the changes that we made and we're happy to say that they will continue into 2023 so teachers were telling us that students came out of the exam with more confidence that's exactly what we wanted we didn't want to hear about students coming out upset crying saying I'm no good at German, I don't want to do it anymore. We want students to learn languages, we want them to enjoy languages and, and I don't know whether it's a bit of a stretch to say enjoy our exams but we definitely want them to feel confident which is what the teachers are saying the students find it now. Um, they're happy to have less inference questions, students are very happy, more accessible, appreciated slower speed of delivery, more time to process in between questions, more realistic amount of cultural content, more appropriate, much happier with the exam. They found the removal of examples and shorter listening passages were a lot better. Students were delighted to receive a fair paper that wasn't trying to trick them. I must say at this point, we never try to trick them, but sometimes, that's how they feel, that it isn't a, a fair question. Um, so we, we even looked at things like the, you know, very carefully at the use of negatives in questions so that it's clearer to students what the question is actually asking them. And most important of all, I would say that students were able to show what they had learned at whatever level they are at. So um, if a foundation student has a, a small amount of language they should still be able to do some of the questions and feel that with the language they have got they were able to apply it was there something else I was going to say here um yeah I mean this oops sorry just if you I would say that if you're more, more interested in knowing about the changes um that link or that QR code will take you to this page where it goes through the 
um, accessibility means in great detail and it gives you very good examples, especially this document here, which shows you the before and the after so that you can see how things have changed. And there's also a very nice video here um, by Katie Lewis, our head of uh, modern languages at Pearson, that, to introduce, that introduces the new amendments. So it's very important for you to know that, that that's going to also be in 2023. Okay. Is there any, oh, yep, got to move on. Any questions there coming up about that? That's just something for you to look at. No, no Anywhere? questions. Great. Post-exam series support then on that case. We've got another lovely spotlight here. And you know what that means. That means a one-stop shop where you can go and find out everything that you need. So these ones, there are one-stop documents here for GCSE and GCE um, that tells you all about results day, about results plus, access to scripts and post-results services. So let's let's just have a oops, sorry, a very quick look. At that. So again, it's a one um, document here. Spotlight on exam results. Here we go. What does it tell you? Um, it tells you the results dates. Results plus, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Oops. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little bit about that, uh, a little bit more about that in a moment. This is an extremely useful tool and it's all included in your exam free fee, as is the access to scripts where you can actually uh, view and download your candidates on um, online marked scripts with their permission so that you can see exactly how they did. Um, and in doing that, you, you can work out you know, for your whole group of students, where were their weaknesses? What do you perhaps need to change in the teaching and learning? Um, also, if you think that your students didn't get the results that they deserved, it's probably good to look at that first before you decide to inquire about results, because it may be that you look at what they've done and think, oh yeah, I can see they didn't quite fulfill their potential here. It might give you a better, under it would give you a better understanding of, of how they actually performed. Um, so again, you can find, um, tells you all about paper availability, understanding marks and grades, um, find out more about the marking process, converting raw marks, grade boundaries. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more as well in a moment. So there is your uh, one-stop shop, your spotlight, one for GCSE and one for GCSE on where you can find everything about what happens after the exams have been taken. Um, so the question papers are, will be made available following the completion of the exam session. The mark schemes are published by the end of July, early August. Now the grade boundaries are available on results day. I'm going to again talk to you about that in a moment. Uh, on the 17th of August for A-level, 24th of August for GCSE, that's for all languages. Um, and the examiner reports um, are published on the website on the Tuesday after results day and you can find them, you will find them all here in exam materials um, on the website. So that sort of shows you where on the website to go. So results plus, I don't, I would hope that you, if you don't know about it, it's definitely something you need to know about. So it's an online analysis tool, which um, analyze, analyzes your students' results question by question, and you can compare them uh, to each other in a class, across classes, within a mat, even compare them to national averages. Um, so it's a fantastic tool. I would say you, you really can't do without using this. And it is something that is included in your exam fee. You don't have to pay for it. Um, and those examiner reports which go on the website the Tuesday after results day are actually available on results day on results plus. Um, and that's something you should definitely go into and have a look at. Um, I want to talk a little bit about grading because this is something that would be very, very close to your hearts. 
So for 2022, the proportion of students achieving grades was to be at a midpoint between 2019, which was the last awarding session before COVID. So it would have been a normal awarding session. Um, and uh, 2021 grading, which was done by teachers. So, so the grade about the, the, uh, the grades um, that um, at 2019 would, would be that little bit uh, harsher than they were in 2021. So the grade boundaries in 2022, um, as it says, would maybe lower or higher than when summer exams were last sat in 2019. However, the proportion of learners achieving each grade for qualifications will be more generous than 2019, but lower than 2021. So for 2022, they were somewhere in between 2019 and 2021. And also you'll have heard of severe grading and, and hopefully you'll have heard an, about um, off calls decision to address that issue by for the first time in 2022, um, allowing a positive 2% point adjustment for grades seven and nine for French and German and a positive 1% point adjustment for grade four to bring French and German in line with Spanish. So I think, you know, ever since I've been teaching, there was always a question of severe grading and why it was more difficult to get higher grades in languages than, than other subjects. So this is a, uh, a rule that Ofqual brought in for 2022. And I'm happy to say that that will continue into 2023. So these positive adjustment points will also be relevant for 2023. In terms of summer 2023 grading as well, um, I think we'll start looking at the last bullet point here. We expect, this is the uh, off course statement, says we expect that overall results in 2023 will be much closer to pre-pandemic years than results since 2020. So we're going back more towards the kind of uh, results that we had in 2019. So that decision means that results in 2023 will be lower than in 2022, but um, 2023 cohort will still be protected in grading terms if their exam performance is a little lower than before the pandemic. So I hope that that makes sense. It means that 2023 won't be quite, the grading won't be quite as, um, I don't want to use the word kind, I don't want to make it sound negative, it, it, it won't be quite as um, uh, quite as sympathetic as for 2022, but that will still be taken into account that, um, uh, that they have experienced disruption, because even dur if during their last two years of study, they haven't had disruption because of COVID. It's acknowledged that in the years when they were still coming up to GCSE years, students still had a lot of time when they couldn't study. So that is the information that we have on grading for 2023. Um, and you can, of course, uh, look at grade boundaries for previous years. There's a link here to the grade boundaries page so that you can We've got information there about understanding grade boundaries, and you can look up for each um, qualification, not just for languages, but for any qualification, what the grade boundaries were in any one particular year. Before I move on to just looking at the, um, the new development, are there any questions about that that's coming up? Nothing in the chat. Oh, nothing in the chat. OK. OK, well, let's move on to have a little look at um, 2024. Oh, sorry, I will ask if if because I'm, I'm going to move on now to 2024, looking forward to 2024, leaving 2023 with you there. If there's anything else that springs to mind you want to know about 2023, do put it in the chat and I'll address it at the end. 
don't mind staying a bit longer to answer questions. But let's have a look at 2024. I wish I could have a little poll here and say, um, you know, who's who's heard about the changes to 2024? Because they are, you know, they are, the new qualification has got a lot of changes, but I think we, as well as other examples, have tried to um, not make it all so completely different that everyone is completely discombobulated. Um, a very quick look at what we've done. Uh, the basics are that year eight will be the first cohort, tiering continues, so um, you either have to be foundation or higher. Speaking will still be 25%. Non-examined assessment, meaning that teachers will conduct it, but we will mark it. There's a focus, a new focus on phonics via sound symbol correspondence, which, in, which translates itself into students having to do a read aloud test and a dictation. There's a different approach in assessment objectives in that there isn't a single assessment objective for each particular skill. There are only three assessment objectives which are divided up between the skills, which I'll show you in a moment. I mean, it's very different that there'll be a dictation and a read aloud. It's been many years since students had to do a dictation and read aloud, I can't remember that ever being part of an assessment. But what's also different is what I've alluded to already is that there will be much smaller vocabulary lists and they are fixed. So for foundation tier, students will have to learn 1200 words and at higher 1700 words. And they are taken from the top 2000 words that are used in the French, German, Spanish language. And by the way, this change only relates to French, German and Spanish at the moment. Um, Inference has gone really, except for a couple, some questions in the reading paper where you have to infer what individual words mean, not what um, individual ideas mean. You're not inferring ideas from uh, a reading or a listening passage. Only in reading will you infer the meaning of individual words and the rubrics will be in English. Um, these are the three Assessment objectives, AO1, understand and respond to spoken language. That's um, the, uh, the speaking paper. Uh, understand and respond to spoken language in writing is the listening paper. So those, those two little listening and speaking in orange relate to AO1. For AO2, understand and respond to written language in speaking and in writing refers to the read aloud um, conversations. The students read a passage aloud and then they um, are asked some questions about it. Um, and it also relates to the reading comprehension and the writing paper. And then AO3 is demonstrate knowledge and uh, accurate application of the grammar and vocabulary prescribed in the spec. So that relates to grammar, but it also relates to the phonics, the sound symbol correspondence. Um, and if you click that link when you are when you have time, you will see uh, a bit more detail about how those assessment objectives are broken down. The one in the middle is only big because there's so many different papers taking a percentage percentage of marks from that AO2. But not to worry because our qualification is, we've interpreted that quite simply. So we've still got four papers, which are, which each assess a different skill, speaking, listening, reading, and writing. They've all got the same number of marks and they've all got the same percentage um, of 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 the qualif of the of the of the marks of the qualification, so we have interpreted the AOs in, in quite a simple, clear, and straightforward way. So that although it's quite different in many ways, there will be a lot within our qualification that you will recognise. Um, now I could talk all night about them, but what I'm going to do is just tell you about our roadshow because we are going everywhere. Um, and we've got all of these free sessions, free face-to-face -face sessions. So we are 
really looking forward to getting out to meeting teachers again at face-to-face -face events. So we've got face-to-face -face sessions in London, Dudley, Middlesbrough, Oldham, Oxford, another one in London, Chelmsford, Ipswich, another one in London, Cambridge, Norwich, Luton, Reading, Leeds. All of these we're going all over the country to meet you face to face to give you a really good introductory se session um, on this new qualification, just to make sure that you can really understand what the Pearson qualification is all about. And there are online sessions as well. And I would say that our buzzword for our qualification is accessibility and and diversity, equity, inclusion. We, as I was talking about our accessibility amends, all of those amends that we've made for now have been brought into our 2024 qualification and more because we want all students to succeed at their level in the GCSE. We want there to be something for everyone and we want to um, our GCSE to, to include all learners and we'd love to tell you how we are trying to do that by inviting you to one of our launch events. Um, now, I really, really wanted to tell you before we finish and in, in the last couple of minutes about these really, I think they're fantastic um, uh, resources for uh, diversity, equity, inclusion. I've been sort of recently looking at them in detail because I've been so busy with the development. I'm now beginning to look, uh, started to look at the other things that we offer. And they are really, really good. It's called Permission to Speak series. And they're basically a series of resources focused on di diversifying the MFL curriculum. They're written by thought leaders and educators through the support of Lisa Pamford, co-chair of the AWL, decolonizing the secondary MFL curriculum special interest group. So they are a collaboration between Pearson and AWL. And they are they are resources which give you really interesting history to um uh, for example, um, the influence of Islam on language and culture. Um, the, um, they, they will open up the world to students and make them understand why, cer why certain languages are spoken in certain countries, like certain African countries. Um, how did the language get there? And things which I hadn't really thought about that much. The, the one that really struck me was the environmental justice and about how... Um, environment and uh, environmental issues are so much worse in certain countries that haven't caused those issues and um there, there, there was a, 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 a was it something called a sacrifice space where certain parts of the world have been chosen to be sacrificed to test toxic to uh, you know to, to test out um nuclear power or 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 some kind of or has created some sort of toxic waste in the experimentation of something which has impacted on the people who live in those sacrifice spaces. Really fascinating history, lots of things I'd, I'd never heard before. And it gives you um, loads of vocabulary that you can use um, for students to talk about these issues in the target language. Um, they, are, they are not specifically linked to the GCSE um, or A-level specs, but they are um, they are resources which really um, divert, show the diversity of language um, and which open up learners well to where languages came from and um, how language that the the history behind the language that they're learning. And here are the um, some of the resources which are available now for Black History Month, Culture Beyond Europe, LGBT, it's fascinating, talking about race, the influence of Islam on language, historical figures in, uh, in the languages that perhaps you would never have heard of, but probably should have heard of because they are such pivotal figures in the history of that language and this environmental justice one I thought was wonderful so if you look at here um, this is just a, a screenshot of the gender neutral language 
in French, German and Spanish speaking world. And that is becoming ever more relevant, in fact, imperative to language learning. And you will see that in our spec and probably in the other board specs um, that we that we have to address that, you know, students want to refer to themselves using different pronouns and so on. And there's more coming soon. Now, how do you keep in touch with us? Um, Rebecca Waker is our wonderful new um, uh, subject advisor. I'm going to stop sharing my screen in a moment and invite Rebecca to, to show herself. She can talk to you about her e-updates and about the online community. Do follow our Facebook page. We've got another QR code there. Um, really useful, up-to-date information comes out on there every day. And do find out about the courses that we are offering. If you click on that link, you will see all the courses, both paid for and free, that we are offering. You just have to go down to your subject. Um, oh, look, there's our subject. Loads and loads of free training and other useful training that you can sign up to. Don't forget those conducting the speaking um, training events. And that's come to the end of the session. I'm three minutes over, but I'm going to stop sharing my screen now. Or at least I think I am. And I would like to invite uh, Rebecca just to say hello. I will take 30 seconds. And all yeah. I will say uh, is that if you've got any questions related to anything that Sharon's gone over this evening or anything on the run up to these next exams or, or beyond that, you can contact me uh, either via email it's teaching languages at pearson.com or using um twitter i've been trying to tweet quite a lot of the links sharon's mentioned this evening uh from at pearson mfl calls um so you're more than welcome to get in touch with me in any of those ways uh, and i'll get back to you as soon as i can that's great thanks very much rebecca um are there any questions outstanding questions in the chat or anything anyone would like to ask now there wasn't anything there was just one clarification related to the grading uh, and i have answered that so i think that's it excellent i don't know why i've only got a tiny i, I can just see a tiny square of of this uh, webinar now on my screen um helen is there anything you'd like to say or ask or point out just anything say, obvious i've forgotten yes i mean one thing i was thinking was whether we you were going to stop the um share have you done that i don't know i can't i can't um, find my way back to the to the no worry. doesn't matter am i still sharing yes i think so it, it really doesn't matter it doesn't matter really i just want to say thank you ever so much for doing that especially you know this is out of your um working time that you're doing this i think that this is where it, it was helpful for some people who can't necessarily get out of school to come to these events so thank you ever so much for doing that really really helpful and to say that um it's all been recorded um and we've got the event bright list so we'll be getting in touch with everybody with a link um to anything that you want to share so rebecca you were mentioning about that you had to get in contact with you if you just want to give us um, um a, a text give me a text and then we can just send that to everybody so so thank you very much indeed for for coming oh i think i've finally stopped sharing thank you very much everyone for giving up your evening to come and listen to to me and um uh, to, to hear about uh, edx pearson edxcel and we'd love to see you at our events and we'd love to um yeah talk to you again and i'm hoping that you'll be able to come to other awl london events as well as awl events as well you mentioned actually I did want to just say this you mentioned about decolonizing cu the curriculum i mean that's something which i think is close to everybody's hearts really yes moment. and might you know in london especially um so we are deliberately going to be doing a session on that on june the 10th um so it'd be lovely to see as many people as possible at that okay so if there's nothing anybody else wants to say, I will stop the recording now. So I'll stop it now.